Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of March. For the new martyrs, we pray that those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we gather in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, let us thank the Lord first and foremost for the gift of this day. Very often in life, we realize that we experience many things. We get many gifts, but we do not appreciate them. Similarly, when we look back at our lives, right from the time of our birth, until now, there may have been numerous blessings, numerous gifts that we have received. But sometimes because of our busy schedule, sometimes because of our carelessness, we often fail to thank the Lord for the blessings, for the graces that we have received. And therefore, as we spend this time with Him in the morning, as we offer this day to the Lord, let us begin with an attitude of gratitude. Let us thank Him for all the things that He has done for us, that He is doing for us and which He will continue to do for us in the future. And therefore, my friends, let us first and foremost begin by thanking the Lord for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for giving us this day a new day to experience your love, joy and mercy. We thank you for giving us another opportunity to correct some of our errors and our mistakes. Now we also thank you for the various opportunities that you have given us opportunities to work on our talents, opportunities to complete some other tasks. Lord, we also thank you for the gift of the people in our lives. We thank you for our parents, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. Most importantly, Lord, we thank you for those people who have dedicated their time and energy and have helped us become who we are. 
It is because of the dedication, of the effort of these individuals that we have become who we are. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that you bless them abundantly. Lord, we also thank you for the numerous experiences that we have had. There have been some very good experiences which we will always cherish. But there have also been experiences that have been difficult, that have not been very easy. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for those experiences as well because they have taught us a lot in life. These difficult experiences have helped us become better individuals. It has helped us to become stronger. And therefore, Lord, today we offer up to you everything, our difficulties, all our worries, and we place them at your feet. Lord, you said, come to me, all those who labor and are tired, and I will give you rest. All of us long for peace, all of us long for rest. And therefore, Lord, we come to you, knowing that you will give us rest, you will give us peace of mind, heart and body. And above all, that you will guide us in whatever we do. My dear friends, the word of God welcomes us this morning. And therefore, let us today begin by meditating and reflecting on Psalm 66. As usual, we will take the psalm and then we will take a look at the psalm in detail. First and foremost, we shall have an overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at a few verses and what the psalm tries to convey to us. Now we see that Psalm 66 is a psalm of praise and thanksgiving that celebrates God's mighty works and it invites all people to join in worship. Now this psalm is attributed to David and it can be divided into several sections, each highlighting different aspects of God's actions and the appropriate response of praise. Now in verses 1 to 4, we see that it is said, Make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to the Lord, How awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. And therefore here we see that the psalm begins with an exhortation to all people to joyfully praise and honor God's name. And here we see that the psalmist acknowledges the awesome works of God and also the power that compels even the enemies to submit. Now the psalmist declares that all the earth will worship God and sing praises to him and this emphasizes the universal nature of God's sovereignty and deserving praise. Now when we come to verses 5 and 7, it goes something like this. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the Son of Man. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. And in these verses 5 to 7, here the psalmist invites the people to witness the incredible deeds of God. Now the psalmist recalls the crossing of the Red Sea and the Jordan River by the Israelites. And in this way, he tries to highlight God's power to part the waters and provide a way for his people. By citing this example, we see that the psalmist emphasizes the rejoicing that takes place in the presence of such miraculous acts. Now, even in our lives, we see that we may find difficult situations. We may find occasions where things appear very difficult. 
And it is in these moments when we approach the Lord, when we surrender ourselves to Him, He will prepare a way for us. Verses 8 to 12 go like this. Oh, bless our God, you people, and make the voice of His praise to be heard, who keeps the soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. And by saying this, the psalmist calls on the nations to bless and praise God. Now the psalmist acknowledges God's role as the protector of life and the one who has tested and refined his people through various challenges. And therefore the imagery of being brought into the net and enduring affliction will speak of the challenges that were faced by the people of Israel and the refining process that they underwent. And in verses 13 to 15, it says, You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through water, but you brought us up to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offering. I will pay you my vow, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. And by saying this, the psalmist describes the hardships faced by people, including being oppressed and going through trials. And we see that despite these challenges, the psalmist acknowledges God's deliverance and restoration leading to a state of rich fulfillment. Here we see that the psalmist expresses a desire to enter God's house with offerings and also to fulfill the vows made in times of trouble. And finally, in verses 16 to 20, the psalm goes like this, Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. And here we see that the psalmist will invite those who fear God to listen as he recounts the ways God has worked in his life. Now if we introspect into our lives, we see that God works in various ways. Sometimes we may not even be aware of it. But yes, the Lord has his own ways of working. That sometimes it is good that we take some time off and look and see what the Lord has done for us. And here the psalmist shares his personal experience of crying out to God, offering praise and being heard. The psalmist acknowledges the importance of a sincere heart and the Lord's responsiveness to genuine prayer. And therefore, if our intention is good, if we know what we are doing, then definitely the Lord will be there with us and we will feel the presence of the Lord. In whatever we do, in the activities that we perform, God's presence will be felt. And therefore, in summary, Psalm 66 can be seen as a powerful psalm that invites everyone to join in joyful praise and thanksgiving. It recounts historical events and highlights God's role in testing and refining his people. Now, the psalm also emphasizes the importance of sincere worship and trust in God's faithfulness. Therefore, the psalm serves as a reminder of God's sovereignty, his deliverance, and the necessity of responding with gratitude and reverence. And therefore, my dear friends, having heard and meditated on Psalm 66, let us now close our eyes and at this morning hour, let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us the time in the morning. 
You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and He has given us new life. Lord, as you have given us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and protect us. For all that you have done for us, Lord, we thank you, we praise you and we glorify you. You have protected us, Lord, and you have guarded us all through the night. And you have given us this morning up. For your great love and mercy, O oh Lord, we thank you, we praise you and we glorify you. You protect us, O oh Lord, and you are always there to guide us and to be with us at every step of the way. And therefore, my dear friends, now let us spend a few moments in silence, meditating on this song. And let us see what touched us. There may be a verse that we were touched by when we read the song. And therefore, let us go back to this verse, let us go back to this word and see how does it apply to me, how can it help me to the will of God and become a better person. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.